Do you want a movie with intense action scenes, romance, a story that makes a lot of sense, and mind-blowing stop-motion animation of robots beating the hell out of each other? Well, too bad. You don't always get what you want. Hey guys, welcome back to the show, and on this episode, I'm going to be talking about yet another movie with a complete lie for a title. This movie is called Robot Wars, but it's been... Uh, three days since the credits rolled, and I'm still waiting for the war. I'm beginning to think that it's just never going to happen. Also, really quick, I wanted to thank all of you who took part in the poll to vote for your favorite video of last year. And with 31% of the vote, the winner was the video I did on the pit. Will, Will you, you wash, wash my, my back? back? Also, if any of you are interested in getting early access to videos, being able to comment on videos first, or even having your name in the credits, there's a few options for that. You can check out my Patreon by clicking on the link in the description, or you can become a YouTube channel member by hitting the join button. Anyways, Robot Wars takes place in the future, which is always fun, because here we get to see what people back in 1993 thought the future would be like. The movie takes place in the year 2041. And here we have Drake and Stumpy. Drake is the pilot of this military robot known as the Maris 2. And it's currently, I don't know, taking civilians on tours. Well, that's really exciting. I mean, yeah, if you look out the window to your left, folks, you'll see uh, the desert it has a lot of sand. If you look out the window on your right, you'll see it's the same desert. Suddenly, they detect hostiles known as Centros, who I guess set up this mini tank and start shooting at the robot transport. I do have to say that I like that the Centros are very coordinated in their outfits. You know, makes them really look like a team. I think that's important, even for villains, you know? Plus, their outfits look much more badass than the good guys' outfits. So Chief Rooney tells Drake to wipe them out, but Drake is like, no, I'm just gonna put up the magnetic shield and remain stationary. I mean, come on, I'm carrying passengers here. Yeah, so it's much better to just stay in one spot and let these people shoot at us. Maybe eventually they'll get bored and leave. In fact, I hope they do because I really don't have much of a plan beyond that. Meanwhile, in the passenger compartment, Dr. Lita Fanning is I don't know, fooling around with some test tubes? Is this really the best time to be doing this? I mean, the ride is so bumpy that they've got to get everyone to wear these shitty little bike helmets. Fasten your safety harness and remain seated. The captain has put on the no smoking sign. Please extinguish all cigarettes. Yeah, if someone wasn't trying to kill us, I would say light them up. But no smoking while we're being shot at, okay? Isn't it obvious as to why? It's just bad optics, you know? Smoking is seen as something very leisurely, you know, casual. We don't want to give off that impression to the people who are trying to murder us. It's insulting. We, we want them to know that we're taking this seriously. Anyways, I guess the world is divided up differently in 2041, with most of the U.S. being called the North Hemi and the Asian countries forming the Eastern Alliance. They don't really go into much more detail on this, so I don't know where that leaves all the other countries. The North Hemi wants to manufacture these robots for the Eastern Alliance, so Chief Rooney really wants to show off the firepower of these things to General Wa Li, which is why he's pushing Drake to shoot at the Centros. It's getting ugly out here, Chief. Request surface troops on the double. Okay, I don't understand this at all. You want them to deploy ground troops to go out there and fight these guys while you just sit there with a weapon that could just take them out in one shot. So because the robot is moving around a bunch, it causes Lita to drop her test tube collection and it breaks, which is just tragic in my opinion. Not because they might have been holding some incredibly important scientific specimens, but because we don't know the value that they held. I'm talking about sentimental value. Maybe those test tubes were passed down from generation to generation. We don't know. You're probably sitting there going, Mark, what the hell are you talking about? Well, think about this. It's the year 2022. People still collect spoons. I've seen them. Entire spoon collections. Very impressive. So is it really that far-fetched that in the year 2041, people might have all sorts of weird collections that mean a lot to them? You know, like uh, forks or glass tubes. I think this is hilarious, though, because she's obviously very upset about this. And it's like... 
What did you think was going to happen? Why are you fooling around with this stuff in the first place? I mean, look at this thing. It's rocking back and forth like crazy, and you just decided, yeah, you know what? This seems about the right time to start handling glass vials. That's like trying to paint while riding a horse and then getting upset when something gets smudged. So they fire a shot at this tank and it just blows up instantly. Again, they could have just done this in the first place. Anyways, they get back to home base or whatever, and I guess all the tourists have to dress in these coveralls. Don't understand what the point of that is, but I do respect it. And you know why? Because to me, it shows that society is constantly working towards being more efficient. I mean, just think of all the time people spend on shopping for clothes, debating what's in style, deciding what to wear for the day. This way, all of that gets thrown out the window. And that's a huge chunk of time you can spend on doing something else. Like trying to convince yourself that this pattern shouldn't have remained in 1993 and died there. Anyways, Lita meets up with her friend Annie, a journalist, and she's all pissed off because of what happened on the robot. You look like something's really bugging me. Oh, what is it? some cowboy pretending to be a robot pilot I had to pick this afternoon to prove what an asshole he is. I still don't understand. What was he supposed to do? Just continue with his plan of sitting there, letting them get shot at? Did you call me an asshole? You broke my specimen, you jerk off. So for whatever reason, Drake sees this as an opportunity to ask her out on a date. Let's go to your place, you know, mine's a mess. I think you need to be, you know, spanked. <laughs> okay, so let's keep in mind throughout this video that this is the first interaction between these two characters, ever. They've never met before, so yeah, things aren't off to a great start. Which is fine, because that's where development comes in. Or it should. So they're taking a bunch of tourists to the town of Crystal Vista, which apparently was abandoned after the toxic gas scare of 1993. And the chief has arranged for General Wa Li to ride along in the cockpit, since he's interested in buying these robots for the Eastern Alliance. But there's something about this that makes me very uncomfortable. Just look, apparently in the future, people go back to using CRT TVs. I never want to move one of those things ever again. I've talked about this before, seriously. It's a giant pain in the ass. It's a gamble every time you go to lift one up. Some of them are heavy and others, it's like they're filled with lead bricks. What, what the hell's in this thing? It's a giant heavy cube. It's never not awkward to move. At one point they started kind of like smoothing the edges around the outside. So now it's like, now it's slipping. Anyways, Lita is convinced that Crystal Vista is a giant cover up. It's a fake ghost town. Come on, what would somebody be hiding under a ghost town? How about a huge cache of weapons? Weapons that were supposed to have been destroyed during the Tri-World Arms Reduction Treaty of 2021. Well, I have to say, I admire this movie's optimism of the world being much more peaceful in 2021, but the reality is we didn't get a global arms reduction treaty. We got billionaires in space and a couple of shitty movie sequels. Really, the whole year was a shitty sequel of 2020. Take a look at this picture from the old Mega One robot man. You know what this is? Micron transponder? Yeah, looks like your typical micron transponder. Trust me, I know a micron transponder when I see one. I, I totally didn't take a wild guess and just read the first words I saw on the paper underneath the photos. I've been on this for weeks, Annie. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. Honestly, my first time watching this movie, I had no idea what was going on at this point. So here comes Drake, and he's like, look at this piece of equipment I got from the tank we destroyed. Sure, it may look like some charred plastic and metal with some wires, but it proves the Centros are working with the Eastern Alliance somehow. Now, you might be sitting there going, wait, what? How did he get that? Did he walk all the way to the wreckage? And how does this prove that the Centros are being supplied weapons by the Eastern Alliance. Well, the answers don't matter. I mean, this explosive acting is all that's needed to convince me. This proves that the Centros are firing on us with weapons made by the Eastern Alliance. That hunk of junk doesn't prove anything. Look at it! 
Honestly, what more proof do you need than that? See, this is the type of scene that I actually dream of acting in. This is just hilarious. Now, let me ask you a question. Was your daddy rich and your mom a good looking? You're cruising for a court martial, Buster Boy. The Eastern Alliance is on our side. Stop the tours, please. You still don't get it, do you? The funny thing is, there is nothing here that makes this piece of equipment look unique at all. And that's fine. Just add in a piece of dialogue explaining why it is. You can say anything. This takes place in the future. Make up words, it doesn't matter. This proves that the Centros are firing on us with weapons made from the Eastern Alliance. That hunk of junk doesn't prove anything. Look at it! You see that right there? Nano quantum plastic hybrid coated wires. Only the Eastern Alliance uses nano quantum plastic hybrid coated wiring. They're the ones who invented it. So Chief Rooney tells Drake to take a vacation and takes him off the pilot roster. You're out of here, Drake. You're off the case. Take a real long look at these eyes and tell me what you see. No, don't do it. It's a trick to try and seduce you, along with the bad boy attitude and that windbreaker. That's a deadly combination not a lot of people know about. I had to retire my windbreaker because it's just too powerful. I haven't been on a date since. It's probably for the best. In the 90s, if you had the Charlotte Hornets starter windbreaker, you had to basically fight them off. Then they have this fighting ceremony, which is going fine until Drake shows up. Oh my God, this is just too much. The lightning bolt t-shirt. You gonna leave some chicks for the rest of us, Drake? It was cute before you popped him. Shut up, Annie. Have you met Annie? Hello. Hi. Hi, handsome. Yeah. Honestly, this movie is so close to being a satire. The way these characters are written, it's just hilarious. So General Wa Li challenges Drake to a fight, and this should be good. I mean, you have the hero face off against the villain early on, the villain will win, and that will build animosity, leading to their final fight at the conclusion, right? Shall we dance? No thank you, General. My feet are killing me. Oh. Yeah, you can probably tell already this is just gonna be action-packed. Full excuse for the year 2041. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in 2040, I mean, whatever. But in 2041, people don't get sore feet anymore. Anyways, Drake finally agrees to the fight, but then comes down there, and I think this is pretty cheap, quite honestly. This is gutless. Anyways, now Lita and Annie are being transported to Crystal Vista. Oh, I want to get into his uniform. <laughs> Annie, please. If he can talk, he's mine. Okay, what is going on here? Annie is the horniest character, and I really hope this goes somewhere. The fact that no one has hooked up with her yet is easily the most unbelievable part of this story. I'd tell her to leave the helmet on. The second most unbelievable part is that Lita suddenly likes Drake for some reason. Nothing has happened since he said he wanted to spank her and she punched him in the mouth, except that she watched him cheap shot this guy. I mean, is that suddenly what got her into him? Anyways, Stumpy and Drake go out into the, I don't know, wasteland and kill a group of Centros. What would John Wayne do? Remember How old do you think this character is? I think mid 40s is probably a fair guess. So the movie takes place in 2041. How many people do you think born in the mid 90s would ask themselves, what would John Wayne do? I don't know, but I imagine the number would be pretty low. Seriously, go to any college campus right now in the year 2022 and just ask random students, hey, are you a big John Wayne fan? So I guess Drake was the one who shot all of these guys. I don't know, something about the barrel of this gun makes me question that. I still don't know exactly why they were out here in the first place, but whatever. Moving on, they find some kind of device that the Centros were using and Oh my god, it turns out it's made in Asia. Is this really that much of a smoking gun? I mean, come on, what isn't? So they arrive at Crystal Vista. Lita is convinced that there's a bunch of weapons hidden underground or something. Well, as people around here used to say in those days, ladies and gentlemen, 
Have a nice day. <laughs> well, what do people say now? Go f yourself? So here they are, in a town that was abandoned almost 50 years ago, which makes it all the more strange that when Lita and Annie break into City Hall, the lights are still on. They go down into the basement, which has even more lighting. Good thing Lita brought this flashlight with her. And I just think this is funny. You know, there's weapons buried under this town. I bet the answer is in the basement of City Hall. You know, that's traditionally where all the exciting stuff happens. Meanwhile, in a bar, Drake is complaining about Lita. That bitch, Lita. Who the hell does she think she is? I don't need her, Stumpy. You've had two interactions with this person totaling what? Like 20 seconds? I guess you're just gonna have to find some way to move on with your life eventually. I love how they keep trying to sell the idea that there's some kind of connection between these characters. Nothing has happened. In fact, you've spent more time talking about each other to other people than actually interacting with each other. So they're in the basement looking for, I don't know, weapons or something. Meanwhile, the tourists walk around town looking at all this stuff from 1993 through these, I don't know, lenses. Oh look, Puppet Master 54. Well, that makes no sense. See, this joke works when it's a movie theater in the future, just like in Back to the Future 2. But this town was abandoned in 1993. So all of this stuff should be from 1993. Anyways, Annie is like, screw this, let's get out of here. And Lita is like, you go ahead, I'll meet you back at the terminal. So she pulls a piece of plastic out of her purse that looks like a gun and goes back in. I mean, after all, if she doesn't find any weapons in this place, maybe she can at least kill someone. And she does. A group of Centros show up and she shoots one of them while the others don't shoot back at her for some reason. Back at the terminal, the Centros show up and oh my god, it looks like they are working with the Eastern Alliance. Oh no, I never saw this coming. Anyways, I guess Lita has been running away from the Centros all day and night, and now she's gotta find a place to hide. Interesting, it looks like there's a car driving in the background. But this is supposed to be a ghost town. You know what, I don't even know why I'm surprised. I'm actually impressed that they were able to keep up the appearance of a ghost town for as long as they did. But now it looks like she's stuck in an unknown building in a scary town with... <laughs> Oh God, no, not loose nails. Seriously, if you ever get caught on one of those, it just like wrecks your clothes. Meanwhile, Chief Rooney is like, ah, oh, crap, I've been double crossed by the people that I was most likely to be double crossed by. And now because Wally has the robot, he can take over the entire North Hemi. Wait, so you mean to tell me you guys only had one of these robots with no backup plan? There's no kill switch to this thing. I mean, this is the upgraded version of a robot you made years ago. And you mean to tell me at no point during the development did you think, hey, what if our only means of defense gets compromised somehow? So Rooney is like, there's only one man for the job and that's Drake for some reason. But it's just too bad that Drake is currently drunk and doesn't even want to help them. But Rooney has an ace up his sleeve. They've got Lita. That's right, Drake. They've got Lita. The woman that you know nothing about, but you're infatuated with because... Well, let's just face it, you're a coos hound, and this was never about love. It's about getting laid. So, will you please help save our nation? Because there may be some sex in it for you. This is the hero of the story. Drake and Stumpy are now going to take back the robot by... I don't know, walking in the desert and talking about how the original Maris One robot was buried underground in Crystal Vista. So wait, they're walking to Crystal Vista? How long is that gonna take? Obviously this place isn't that close to the base. They have to transport people there with the robot. So, you know, whatever. This is so goddamn stupid. Apparently they get there in a few minutes because the Centros find Lita and Stumpy and Drake are already there to rescue her. Wally is trying to destroy this tomb which holds all this toxic waste because I don't know exactly. I think he just wants to mess shit up at this point. 
But then he finds out that Drake is getting the old robot, so he starts making his way to Crystal Vista to fight him. All right, so they got the robot fired up, and well, I guess it wasn't really dismantled. They just buried the whole robot intact. So here we go, it's fight time. The funny thing is, this part of the movie finally piqued my interest, but then I looked and I saw there was only 10 minutes left in the movie, and that just basically torpedoed any hope I had left that this was going to be entertaining. I do have to give the movie some credit here because the stop motion isn't bad. It's just that this fight scene just really isn't that intense at all. And the fact that the original robot, which they tried to bury and forget about for whatever reason, was able to beat this new and improved version of the robot with a single laser blast is kind of anticlimactic. So they destroy the robot and then Stumpy comes into the cockpit when Drake tells him, Beat it, will you? I'm gonna be busy for the next 40 or 50 years. Wow, Drake, that's quite the long-term commitment to a woman you don't even know. And of course, now they make out because they've been through so much together. Let's take a trip down memory lane. They met, he said some inappropriate things, she punched him, he sat behind her at the fight ceremony. Uh, that was pretty much it until the last 20 minutes of the movie when they rescued her. They found the robot and she sat beside him as he destroyed the other robot. That's the entire development of their relationship in this movie. It's also the end of the movie, which again, I think is extremely disappointing just based on the title. There weren't any robot wars, plural. I would argue there wasn't even a single robot war. This fight at the end was more like a robot scuffle, if anything. So there you have it, a really bad movie with some really bad characters. Uh, come to think of it, I don't even know why Annie is in the movie. Remember Annie? At the end of the movie, she just gets saved with the rest of the passengers and then runs off. So that's the end of her. I guess she got her story that she was looking for. I, I don't know. Quite honestly, I think the whole time she just wanted to get laid and that never happened. The poster of the movie says, first there was Robot Jacks. Well, this movie was made by I think the same production company, but it has nothing to do with Robot Jocks. Sorry to disappoint all you Robot Jocks fans out there. I don't even know why I'm still talking about this thing. It's not even half baked. The ending feels like it should be the beginning of something. It actually feels like the beginning of the conflict. The Eastern Alliance basically just declared war. Seems like that would be a pretty big deal. Seems like it would be the start of the robot wars. But you know what? I don't even know why I'm complaining. This movie is an hour and 11 minutes. That's agonizing enough. I don't need any more of this. So that's pretty much it for this one. As usual, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you all next time. Take a real long look at these eyes and tell me what you see. Because I've been using this new cream lately to try and get rid of these dark circles under my eyes, but I don't know if it works. This stuff cost me like 20 bucks. Do you notice a difference at all? I mean, let's just say you didn't know me, okay? And you just saw me walking down the street. Would you think to yourself, gee, that guy's got some pretty dark circles under his eyes. He must be sleep deprived. I got this other stuff. It kind of rolls on, but I don't know if that makes any difference? Let's just see. Okay, just bear with me for a sec here, okay? So I'm gonna put this on. All right, don't look for a few seconds. Dum -dum 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 -dum. Give it some time. Okay, what about now? Anything? Any difference at all? Chief? Only the Eastern Alliance uses nanoplastic hybrid quantum wiring. Wait. Only the Eastern Alliance uses nano hybrid Quantum plastic coated, um, only the, the Eastern Alliance, <laughs> only the Eastern Alliance uses nano quantum plastic hybrid coated wiring, debating on what's in style, deciding what to wear for the day. I feel really sick. Maybe I shouldn't have eaten that frozen banana. I don't know how long it was in the freezer. I really rolled the dice on that banana and I think it's coming up snake eyes. I don't know what to do. The fact that no one has hooked up with her yet is easily the most unbelievable part of this story. I'd tell her to leave the helmet on. <laughs> I mean, the way it's the way it's designed, you got something to hold on to there. Okay, all right. Um... <laughs>